We ended off with David, King David. Remember, he was the one that got rid of the giant. Well, King David was the was the king of Israel, and he was a good king. But after King David died, other kings came into place, and they started to make bad choices. And the people of Israel started to worship fake gods. Can you believe it? No. Fake gods. Is that against the commandments? No. Yeah. We're supposed to worship God only. Well, they started to worship fake gods. And so God sent warning after warning. He sent prophets and told them, stop worshiping fake gods or you're going to be sent into captivity. Well, the people did not listen. And so God said, time's up. And he sent the people, the Israelites, had to be taken into captivity. That means they were taken from their land, the promised land, and they were taken into this wicked city called Babylon. Well, remember our scripture verse, the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro over all of the earth to show himself strong and to strength. He said, I will never worship fake gods. I will only worship my God. And I'm going to be set apart. And when God saw that, the Holy Spirit came upon Daniel. Well, there was a king there, and he was the king of, of the Medes and the Persians. But he wasn't necessarily bad. He just didn't know the real God. And so he sees that Daniel is a special man, that Daniel is a man that God has his favor on him. And so he said to Daniel, now Daniel was about 85 years old. He said to Daniel, Daniel, I like you. Can you say that? Hello. You've got a special spirit. You're in charge. Ooh, so Daniel became in charge of all of the people. Well, there was somebody who was jealous. Him and his friends were jealous of Daniel. And they were like, I gotta get rid of that guy. Can you say that? I gotta get rid of that guy. But let's see, what can I do? Daniel is a goody two-shoes. He follows all the rules. The king likes him. I gotta come up with something where something Daniel does that I have to make against the rules. So he goes to the king and he says, Hey, King, I got a plan. He said, I want you to sign a law that says everybody has to <coughs> worship you. And you say, worship me? You say that, worship me? Worship me. I like that plan. I like that. Yeah. So <laughs> they signed the law. And now, in the Mede and Persians, when the law was signed, you could not change it. It became law forever. And so the bad guy goes, can you go like this? Ha, ha, ha. You get that? I've got him now. Well, Daniel hears about the law, but Daniel doesn't go and hide. He goes and does what he always does. Now, what he does is he would go to his window and he would face out towards Jerusalem because the Bible had told him, when you get taken into captivity, if you pray towards Jerusalem, I will hear your prayers and I will rescue you. So Daniel knew his word and so he started praying. So can you pray, dear Jesus, please help me. I will worship you only. Even if I go into the lion's den. All right, good job. And so, the bad guys, they say, ha, ha, ha. Can you point at him and go, ha, ha, ha. I caught you now. So you're going to go tattletale to the king and say, king, king, we caught Daniel, pray. Now the king is sad because he likes Daniel, but he needs to follow his own rule that he made. And so he said, I have to send you to the lion's den. Can you say that? I have to send you to the lion's den. But your God will save you. Yes, your God's going to save you, right? From the... Yay. And how did the 
God save Daniel. You guys remember? God closed in the lion's mouth. What? Closed the an angel. Yeah. So just hold the Close angel. Close the lion's mouth. And say, God sent an angel. Can you say that, Lucas? And he closed the lion's mouth. And Daniel was saved. But guess what happened? The king, he looked at the bad guy and said, you're going in the lion's den. You don't need to. Oh, no! <laughs> but the bad guy, dun, dun, dun. he had to go into <laughs> the lion's den. Did you go in there, ready? All right. In the lion's den. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how God rescued Daniel.